one, two. Hello YouTube, I'm Cara Lee Ford from Cara Lee Ford Ceramics and I'm talking to you today about what to think about before giving up the nine to five to become a potter. I've got a list here that I wrote of kind of all the things that I wanted to talk about, talk to you about in this video to make sure that I covered everything. Yeah, it's a long list. So I've been a potter for just under eight years now. There are a million different ways of earning a living from pottery and there's not one right way. Everyone's situation is different, so our personal situation is gonna be different. Some people have caring responsibilities, whether that's children, relatives with needs. Some people have debts, other people have trust funds. There are no kind of <laughs> formulas to follow um, in order to leave a job and become a potter. There are so many different aspects to consider um, and I can't hope to cover every single one of them in just one small YouTube video. That's why this is called part one. But what I am going to try and do is give you a starting point. Oh, before we start, I believe this is what everyone else does and I need to do it too, is ask you to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks very much. Why do you want to become a potter? If you think it's a good way to get rich, uh, I have news for you there. You might want to think again. There are some exceptions, of course. Um, there are some potters who do very, very well for themselves, but they tend to be the exception and not the rule. Most potters that I know, certainly, um, live quite modest lifestyles, including me. Even the ones with huge social media followings, they don't have yachts or huge mansions. But pottery is not just a way of making a living, it's a way of making a life. And it's a beautiful way of making a life. It's wonderful and I love it and I feel so, so very lucky that I get to do it every day. What I would say to you is if you love the process of pottery, if you love having your hands in clay, you're fascinated by it, you can't learn enough, you want all the information, you are absolutely obsessed with pottery, then pottery as a career might be the right one for you. You've really, really got to love the process. Do you need a degree in ceramics to become a potter? Back when I thought about becoming a potter full time, I actually went to speak to um, a ceramics professor at my old university to talk about um, the degree programs, um, whether it was a good idea for me to do a BA in, in pottery, in ceramic. My card ran out of space. Um, so as I was saying, um, what did he tell me? So he told me that degrees are amazing to help you know your subject, to really immerse yourself within it. You'll be surrounded by all the equipment you need to experiment with different techniques and different processes. It'll help you establish connections within the art world and it'll certainly help you find your own creative voice. But it won't necessarily teach you how to make money from your art. To actually make and sell work, you definitely don't need a degree in order to just do that. Not many degrees, in fact, teach you how to make money from your subject. Um, certainly my fine art degree did not. Going to university and having a very expensive education is not necessary when you're thinking about becoming a potter. There are other ways that you can learn. So think about apprenticeships, think about going and getting work experience from another potter, or another studio. Think about being a studio technician or an assistant to a potter already in production. The way I did it, I decided to become an apprentice to myself. So I decided that I was gonna just learn on the job, make all the mistakes, be okay with that, um, and learn as I went along. That's just the way I did it. That's not necessarily the way that's gonna suit you, but that is a way to do it. 
So talking to your friends and family. Now I found this was so helpful and it's really important to get the support of those closest to you when considering like a huge life change like changing a career. They might help you think about things in a slightly different way. They might help you consider things you might not necessarily have already thought of. And I was really surprised that all my friends and family were just super supportive. They knew how much I loved pottery, they could see how much joy it brought me and there was literally no one who was negative. I was really really lucky. Don't be put off if someone in your life, someone close to you, does come across as maybe a little bit worried about that choice that's okay, that's probably them just trying to protect you. Being a potter is not the easiest way of making a living, being an artist isn't the easiest way of, of kind of, you know, carving out a life for yourself. There's a lot of kind of like baggage um, surrounding that life choice. So if someone close to you, maybe your parents or a partner, is um, less than supportive to begin with, don't worry about that. Try not to get too defensive keep talking to them about it, keep telling them how serious you are and kind of get them involved in the process. Ask them their opinion about what you, what they think might work um, and that might really help to get them on, on board. Spreadsheets. Oh, I hate spreadsheets personally but I would really, really encourage you to make a budget spreadsheet before you decide to do anything. So this is what I did. So I listed all of my outgoings, so my bills, my rent, um, anything that I had to pay for, so my car, my phone, food, fun. You know, you, you think that's not essential, but actually having spare money to kind of do stuff, to, to go out with your friends, even if that's just to the cinema, or, you know, to pay for parking, to go into town, to like, just look around. Um, you know, all of those things are really essential to have a full life. And you wanna make sure that you kind of account for all of that within your monthly outgoings know what is actually reasonable for you to, to expect to earn in order to cover your lifestyle costs at the moment so go through your bank account look at all your direct debits look at all of your standing orders make sure you account for everything it's really easy to kind of think about the big stuff like your rent or your mortgage it's also really easy to forget the smaller things like you know your kind of your I don't know, Amazon Prime subscriptions or your um, Netflix or, you know, what your phone bill costs. So really make sure that you go through that with a fine tooth comb and know the number. So do it for a good few months. So don't just do it for one month because that might not be a, an accurate representation of your entire year. So have a look back over the last 12 months and really understand how much money you need to, you need coming in in order to cover all of your bills. How much time do you actually spend making pots when you're a potter? Not as much as you think. So in reality, quite a small proportion of your time is spent actually making pottery. The rest of the time you will be marketing. Yes, marketing. And if you don't like marketing, yeah, that's gonna be a really big part of your job, so. The way that I break it down is that 40% of your time will probably be making pottery. So that's actually like producing it, touching it, um, making it, glazing it, all of those things. 10% um, of your time will be doing admin. So that's replying to emails, sending out invoices, chasing up invoices, um, answering messages on social media. Then 50% of your time will be marketing. If a tree falls in the woods, but there's no one around to hear it, did that tree really fall, exist? Something like that. You know what I mean. 
Marketing includes things like taking photos of your work, writing copy for the product descriptions that go on your website or your Etsy site, um, creating those listings, so there's uploading photos, there's like editing of the photos, cropping them to make sure they're the right size, posting on social media, that's also marketing, applying to shows, so any craft shows or art shows you want to be part of, that's also marketing, creating a catalogue, um, so if you have any uh, stockists that you want to be in, you'll, you'll need a catalogue in order to approach them and, and show them your work. That's also marketing. Contacting those potential stockists, writing emails to your customers, building a customer mailing list, making, tweaking and updating your website, experimenting and creating new ideas. That's all marketing. So even though you won't actually, you'll, you'll be making things, you'll, so you'll be, you'll be playing with clay, you won't actually be making money from that experimentation that will be kind of going towards your marketing going towards kind of like making you a better putter making your products better basically if you make a whole bunch of amazing work but there's no one around to see it then you're not going to sell it that's why marketing is so important sorry i was so afraid of showing people my work to begin with I, it took me months to actually just be brave enough to show someone something that I'd made on the wheel. So building your confidence is a really, really um, foundation step into being able to then talk about your work and, and showing people and not being kind of afraid of doing that. Some of the ways that you could build confidence, think about doing an open studio or an open arts trail whether you don't have your own creative space yet, you can still open up your house and show your products and your work to people, invite them in and get chatting about the process, get chatting about your work. That really is a really great way of building confidence is to just talk about your work. And face to face is kind of easier than doing it on social media to begin with. I started doing kind of open studios to my local village so that we have a Facebook page in our village and I invited everyone to come and see my work and see me throw and have a look at what I was doing and what I was making and it was such a lovely way to kind of build my confidence and also get the word out there it was kind of two for the price of one um, and I sold some pieces as well, which was just absolutely great. Do some local craft fairs. That's also a really great way of building your confidence and meeting other makers. Talking about meeting other makers, find yourself some peers. So find people who are in a similar stage of their pottery journey to you and reach out to them. Be supportive to each other. So don't expect just everyone to be supportive to you if you're not going to be supported to them. So you really, really need to kind of try and build relationships with people. You, you can do that on social media, you can do that on, by joining some Facebook groups. Craft fairs is a really great way of finding other kind of small businesses around your area. Go for a coffee with them, offer to buy them a piece of cake and have a chat about kind of your hopes and dreams and um, you know, help each other out, see what they're struggling with, see if you can help them and in return they will probably want to help you too. Get a real rapport going with other makers who are at the same stage of their journey or roughly the same stage as their journey as you. Don't expect makers who have really big accounts to kind of um, want to be automatic pals with you. Everyone started with nothing, right? So they've probably got their kind of like peer groups um, intact already. So really reach out to people who are kind of at the same level as you and, and will really want to reciprocate that um, connection and you'll really benefit from helping each other. You could even join Pottery Club. Start a mailing list. Okay, so this is one of the most important things that you'll ever do if you start your own business, is start your own mailing list. So building a uh, social media following is brilliant, amazing, great. However, you're always gonna be at the mercy of Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or TikTok or whoever um, owns the actual data and they could just switch it all off tomorrow. Building your own mailing list with emails of potential customers is the only surefire way to make sure that you will stay in contact with your potential customers. 
Now, you need to make sure that you get permission from people before you put them on your mailing list. You can't just add someone's mailing list without their consent. Um, so if you're in Europe or the UK, then you need to follow GDPR. Um, if you're in the States, there might be similar um, legislation, I'm not sure. But you need to get express permission from people before you put them on your mailing list. But you can do that, that's easy. You can just have a tick box on your website, you can have a little pop-up, you can offer people a discount if they join your mailing list, you can even offer them a freebie. Make sure you start building mailing list from day one. If you're not ready to throw in the towel of the nine to five quite yet, why don't you think about going part-time? Chat to your boss if you think they will be receptive to that and ask them if there is potential for you to reduce your hours, maybe reduce your days, and then you can put more energy into building your pottery on the side as well as your day job. Or if that's not an option, you could potentially, you know, wait tables or um, do some babysitting, pet walking or something that can supplement your income that's going to be kind of a little bit easier and more reliable than, than building a pottery business just for the first few years. Like I said, there are so many aspects to cover here and I've only really scratched the surface. In part two of this video series, I'm going to be answering questions sent to me by my Pottery Club members. They're going to be free to ask me anything about my business and I'll be sharing my experience and the answers to their questions in that video. By joining up, you will also get personal help from me whenever you need it. You get project video tutorials, tips and tricks and recommendations, as well as a lovely supportive community of other potters. The link is below this video. I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that's helped you even if it's just a little tiny bit. Okay, bye. And I'm so got a list. Ooh. There's a wasp. Waspy, go away. How'd you get in?